Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be animating Deadpool. We're going to give him an idle animation. Now please make sure you've checked out my beginner's guide to animation playlist that will guide you through the basics of animation and I'll assume some knowledge from that in this tutorial. And do make sure you check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay, so here's where we got to last time. What I'm going to do is go across to the animation workspace and we'll set up a little bit for animation. First of all, let's give him a floor. So shift A to add mesh plane. I'll scale that up and I'll press Alt G to make sure it's right in the center. That should be in exactly the right space because we set up our Deadpool to be right in the center of the scene. I'll just move him into the middle there. I'll also move my camera, so N to go to this toolbar, view, and then lock camera to view. Press N to get rid of that toolbar. And now I should be able to move my camera into position. Okay, so let's click on our rig. Now to go to pose mode quickly, control tab will take you there. And we'll just do a really simple idle animation. In the animation workspace, we have the dope sheet at the bottom here. And we've also got the timeline at the bottom here. That gives us a record and play buttons and things. We've got the length of the animation that we can change here. Those tools are also in the output properties here. So this idle animation will be fairly short. I'll change it to 50 frames. And let's go to the start. And let's just put him into a simple, comfortable position. It's not quite comfortable at the moment. He's sort of got an A pose going on. So we'll just move a few things around. So I'll select on different parts of the rig. G to grab, R to rotate. Remember, you can only move the IK handles. That's this big one here, this one here, and the same on the other side. And one other thing we can grab is the middle one here, and we can move them around like that. Pretty much every other bone you'll be rotating. Okay, I'll move the sword for the other side as well. So I'll rotate that and just move it into a more comfortable position, maybe down by the side a bit more, this one. And I think the same for that one. So each time I'm grabbing that IK handle at the end there. And always look at your screen over here to see how it's going to look. I'm just going to bring him down really slightly. So grabbing the middle here, G to grab and Z, just so he's a bit more bent at the knees, only slightly. And maybe just move him off to one side really slightly, so G then X, just to make him a tiny bit more natural. Now if I move across, you can see that I've got some weight painting issues that I must have missed. So I'll just undo that for the moment. This object here, for some reason, hasn't got any weight. Let's go to the modifiers. It's got an armature, which means it is attached to the rig, but it doesn't seem to have any weight to the bones. I'll actually remove that armature and I'll just redo it. So I'll click on the armature, make sure that bone is selected. I don't need that one. And press Control P and just the bone. So it's only linking to that bone. Now when I select the rig and move it about, yes, that's parented, that's fine. Okay, so like I say, just off to the side really slightly, just so he looks a tiny bit more comfortable, and there we go. Okay, so that's our first keyframe. I can select everything, and then with your mouse over the viewport, press I, and then location and rotation. So we're only rotating the bones and moving the bones at the moment. So location is the movement and rot being the rotation, so lock rot is what we're going for. If you were scaling anything, then you choose the location, rotation, scale as well. So you can see it's set these keyframes down the bottom here, and we can see our whole rig down there. So every single bone has a keyframe on it. And that's all at frame one, where my playhead was. So if I scrub along my timeline now with left click, nothing actually happens because we've only got one keyframe. But as soon as I change this, let's go to frame 25, and move them about a bit, you'll see that it'll interpret the difference between frame zero and frame 25. So if I click on my rig, I'm just going to G to grab in the Z, and he's just going to lift up really slightly as if he's breathing in, in a big way. <laughs> I'll rotate this back slightly as well, R then X, up like this. Okay, so we've moved that bone. If I press I and then location rotation, I did only rotate that bone, but I'm always doing location and rotation. Now I've only got that bone selected. So if we go to our rig here, I've got spine FK, which is this one here. And we can see what we've got selected up here as well. That's the only thing that's got a keyframe on. And remember I made changes to this one as well. 
And when I click on that, you can see the torso there. So torso in my rig that I've got selected here, and that hasn't got a keyframe on it. So you've got to be a bit careful when you're doing things like that. It's far easier to actually press the record button that whenever I make a slight change, so G to grab in the Z axis, and I hold down shift and just move that slightly, suddenly you can see more keyframes added. So whenever I make a change, it's adding those changes in here. You do have to be a bit careful with this though, because let's say I scrub along my timeline to see what that looks like and leave it there and start moving things around, it's going to add a new set of keyframes. So just be aware and try where you can to think carefully about where you're putting your keyframes. It's a good idea to actually use the jump to keyframe. So you can see I'm sort of slightly breathing up like that between the two keyframes. And when I drag across, it sort of interprets that and he kind of breathes in and out <laughs> in a weird way. Now, if you want things to loop, if I select the keyframe here, so this torso keyframe and press shift D and move that across. If I click on any of my other objects, you can see that they haven't got keyframes there. So I only copied the one for the torso. So I'll undo that. So before you do that, make sure you pressed A to select all. You need to make sure you select the summary keyframe at the top and then that will select all the keyframes underneath. Then Shift D to duplicate and move all your keyframes across. Now we should have a looping animation. If I press the space bar, you can see this really slight sort of breathing in, except his arms aren't moving at all, so it looks a bit odd. So let's put a little bit of arm movement in. Let's go to that keyframe there. There's a quick way to do that by pressing this button here, jump to keyframe. And like I say, it's a good idea to think about where your keyframes are going rather than have lots of keyframes scattered along here at the beginning anyway. So get some major poses. Here's my start pose, middle pose, and the end pose is the same as the start pose, so it loops. And when you're doing any animation, keep it nice and simple to start off with. So you've got sort of key poses, hence key frames, that you map out first, and then do your in-between frames. Okay, so like I say, I'm gonna make the hands move slightly, so I'll just grab one of these, and he's breathing in, so that will just go up really slightly and maybe rotate really slightly like this and just a minor bit of movement to add some variation. Right, and because I've got the record on, that's all been recorded. Now when I scrub across my timeline, you can see that he kind of breathes in and out. Let's have a look at how that's gonna look in real time by pressing the space bar. And that's good, but it's a little bit quick. So I'll make my end frame a little bit longer, maybe 60 and see how that looks. But although it's extending my timeline, it's not extending the keyframes. What I'll do is I'll select everything and make sure I've got everything selected in here as well with A over my viewport and then make sure I've got all the keyframes selected, so A in the dope sheet as well. Come right to the beginning. I could, of course, use my keyframe buttons here and I can use my up and down arrows as well to jump from keyframes. If I go to the beginning now, I can press S to scale and it will actually scale it out rather than having to move this to 25 and this to 60. That's especially good if you've got lots of keyframes in here that you need to even out and distribute. Okay, so I've got this now, let's press play and see what it looks like now. Okay, and that looks fine, I think. Simple, basic, idle animation and a nice simple intro into setting up animations. Let me know how you're getting on with the comments below or join the Discord server and chat to me there. Remember to at Grant so I can easily spot you in the server. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.